Hello and welcome back Discovery Learners to another episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. It is I, Teacher Liz here, your host once more on today, Thursday. On this episode, we're going to go over some observances, interesting history, I'll be showing you some cool landmarks, animals, pretty plants, and of course, some interesting facts. So let's not delay any further, let's start the show. And now for our daily observances. Our first observance is National Thank a Mail Carrier Day. National Think a Mail Carrier, also known as Think a Mailman Day, on February 4th reminds us that someone makes sure that the mail gets through six days a week, 52 weeks a year. The day is a timely note of just how important mail carriers are to our daily lives. Take time out of our day to thank the mail person who is responsible for delivering our mail to us. The Pony Express riders earned a famous reputation in their short existence. Their motto was, neither rain or snow nor death of night can keep us from our duty. This motto is believed to be taken in part from a motto dating back to ancient times. The most popular variation of this motto, through rain or snow, sleet or hail, we will carry the mail, we will not fail. Here are some fun facts about the Postal Service. In 1775, the Second Continental Congress established a constitutional post the first organized mail service in America. As the nation's first postmaster general, Benjamin Franklin established many of the conventions we are accustomed to today. Postage stamps were invented in 1847. On April 3, 1860, the famous Pony Express officially took off. In 1863, free city delivery started. And in 1896, free rural delivery began. In 1963, the zip code began. After taking a look back on our National Thank the Mail Carrier Day, take time to thank the mail carriers delivering your mail every day. So how do you observe Thank a Mail Carrier Day? This is your opportunity to say thank you to your United States Postal Service carrier. One way to celebrate with a friendly smile or a token of appreciation. Let your mail carrier know how much you value them. A simple thank you or maybe giving them a gift card. <laughs> Our next observance for today is Optimus Day. Confident people look into the future with hope. And on Optimus Day, we celebrate the volunteers who share their enthusiasm, skills, and talent to make that tomorrow a vibrant and peaceful one. On the first Thursday in February, recognize an optimist whose endeavors have made a difference in your community. Each year, optimist organizations around the world volunteer their time and skills working with our youth in their communities. They provide leadership, scholarship, wellness and safety, art and sports programs. Optimist Day recognizes the volunteers and the youth who support their communities in many different ways. Every day, our growing communities rely on ingenuity and energy from the next generation to be an integral part in our neighborhoods, schools and towns. These young volunteers and the mentors who guide them connect them to a greater world around us. Their stewardship creates a hopeful future for all of us. Here's a brief history on Optimus Day. The original idea of Optimus Day developed in 1909 when the Optimus Club of America promoted the day to be observed on April 1st as a way to encourage kind acts and further optimism. The idea was to also replace the practical joking associated with April Fool's Day. For the next several decades, clubs across the country hosted Optimus Day observances in their communities on various dates throughout the year. In 2017, Optimus International declared Optimus Day to be observed on the first Thursday in February with a focus on recognizing the achievements of the volunteers and the youth in the community. Each year, the programs they support improve their communities and provide opportunities for the youth of all ages. They also coordinate with other volunteer organizations, making the future brighter for all involved. So how do we observe Optimus Day? Recognize the volunteers in your community. Dedicate the day to their accomplishments and let them know how much you appreciate them. Let them know your community admires their hard work and dedication. 
encourage other youth to become involved in the community organizations too. Help them see the benefit of improving the world where they live and connecting with the people who live there too. Share the projects and resources of your community's volunteer organizations, the volunteers, and the youth. And our final observance for today is National Homemade Soup Day. February 4th heats up with National Homemade Soup Day. In every cuisine, soup provides a rich basis of flavor and history. Before the era of modern transportation, soup was a product of regionally available foods. For this reason, there are thousands of soup recipes available today. Many soups also offer medicinal properties. What was once considered a wives' tale, chicken soup now has the backing of the scientific community. Yes, chicken soup helped relieve symptoms of the common cold. How? Well, scientists believe that a bowl of the soup may reduce inflammation of the lungs. It is thought that the chicken soup slows down the activity of white blood cells that can cause inflammation. But that's not all homemade soup does. Every cook knows the most important ingredient that goes into every pot of simmering soup they keep the ingredients stored where it will do the best work too. As they work, they season the soup from their heart giving it just the right amount of love each and every time. Whether they add it to the noodles or the vegetable, the broth or the cream, each cook knows there's enough to go around. That's why homemade soup heals the best. So how do we observe National Homemade Soup Day? Go ahead and tell me about your favorite homemade soup. Maybe share a recipe or a memory. Gather the family of your household to make soup together. Or you can pause here and write this recipe of homemade soup you can make at home. On this day in history. Today, in 1977, Rumors, the 11th studio album by Fleetwood Mac, is released, which also won a Grammy for Album of the Year. Rumors is the 11th studio album by the British-American rock band, Fleetwood Mac, released on February 4th, 1977 by Warner Brothers Records. Largely recorded in California in 1976, it was produced by the band with Ken Kaliak and Richard Dashhut. The band wanted to expand on the commercial success of Imponius' 1975 album, but it struggled with relationship breakups before recording started. The rumor studio sessions were marked by hedonism and strife among band members that shaped the album's lyrics. Recorded with the intention of making a pop album, the album's musical featured a pop rock and soft rock sound characterized by accented rhythms and electric keyboards such as Fender Rhodes and Hammond B3 organ. The band members partied heavily for much of the recording sessions and its completion was delayed by its mixing processes, but was finished by the end of 1976. Following the album's release, Fleetwood Mac undertook worldwide promotion tours. Rumor became the band's first number one album in the UK album chart and also topped the US Billboard 200. The songs Go Your Own Way, Dreams, Don't Stop, You Make Love and Fun were released as singles, all of which reached the US Top 10. Rumors was an instant commercial success, selling over 10 million copies worldwide within just a month of its release. The garnered widespread acclaim from critics, with praise centered on production quality and harmonies, which frequently relied on the interplay among three vocalists, and has inspired the work of musical acts in different genres. It won Album of the Year at the 1978 Grammy Awards, and has sold over a million copies worldwide, making it one of the best-selling albums of all time. Domestically, it received a diamond certification in several countries, including the UK, Canada, and Australia, and has been certified 20 times platinum in the United States. Today, in 2004, Mark Zuckerberg launches Facebook from his Harvard dormitory room. Facebook is an American online social media and social networking service based in Manila Park, California, and a flagship service to the namesake company Facebook Incorporated. It was founded by Mark Zuckerberg, along with fellow Harvard College students and roommates Edward Sarvin, Andrew McCollum, Dustin Malkovitz, and Chris Hughes. The founders of Facebook initially limited membership to Harvard students. Membership was expanded to Columbia, Stanford, and Yale before being expanded to the rest of the Ivy League, MIT, and higher education institutions in the Boston area. 
then various other universities, and lastly high school students. Since 2006, anyone who claims to be at least 13 years old have been allowed to become a registered user of Facebook, though this may vary depending on local laws. The name comes from the Facebook directories often given to American University students. Facebook can be accessed from devices with internet connectivity, such as personal computers, tablets, and smartphones. After registering, users can create a profile revealing information about themselves. They can post text, photos, and multimedia, which is shared with any other user that have agreed to be their friend, or with a different privacy setting, with any reader. Users can also use various embedded apps, join common interest groups, buy and sell items or services on the marketplace, and receive notifications of their Facebook friends' activities and activities of Facebook pages they follow. Facebook claims that it has 2.8 billion monthly active users as of December 2020, and it was the most downloaded mobile app in the 2010s globally. Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is Rosa Parks. Born February 4th, 1913 in Tuskegee, Alabama. This American civil rights activist who became known as the First Lady of Civil Rights after she was arrested for refusing to give up her seat on a bus in 1955. This act instigated the legendary Montgomery bus boycott, which helped end racial segregation on public transit across the country. There are two Rosa Parks days in her honor. First is her birthday on February 4th, and the second is the day of her arrest on December 1st. She unfortunately passed away October 24, 2005 at the age of 92. But she will always be remembered for working with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who led the civil rights movement. Happy birthday, Rosa! Our next notable figure born today is Alice Cooper. Born February 4, 1948 in Detroit, Michigan. This American shock rock singer and performer who released the hits Schools Out and 18 and who gained fame for the album Billion Dollar Babies in 1973. He was inducted to the Rock Hall of Fame in 2011. Before he was famous, he declined his college acceptance letters to pursue a career in music. In 1997, he was nominated for a Grammy Award for Hands of Death, Burn Baby Burn. He also appeared alongside Dana Carvey and Mike Myers in the 1992 film Wayne's World. He turns 73 years old today. Happy birthday, Alice! Another notable figure born today is Oscar De La Hoya. Born February 4th, 1973 in Los Angeles, California, this American legendary boxer known as the Golden Boy compiled a record of 39 to 6 and won a gold medal at the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona, competing in the lightweight class. He defeated 17 world champions over the course of his career. Before he was famous, he won 234 of his 240 amateur boxing matches and was the 1989 National Golden Gloves Bantamweight Champion. He won 10 world titles in 6 different weight classes. He also founded Golden Boy Promotions in 2002. He turns 48 years old today. Happy birthday, Oscar! An additional notable figure born today is Hannibal Burgess. Born February 4, 1983 in Chicago, Illinois. This American stand-up comedian was a writer on Saturday Night Live and 30 Rock. He co-starred on The Eric Andre Show on Adult Swim and played the role of Lincoln on Comedy Central's Broad City. In 2015, he played Griff in the comedy movie Daddy's Home. Before he was famous, he started doing stand-up comedy while attending college in Chicago. While his sister kicked him out of her house, he was forced to sleep on the subway for a period of time. He has also performed his stand-up routine on late-night television shows hosted by David Letterman, Jimmy Fallon, and Craig Ferguson. He turns 38 years old today. Happy birthday, Hannibal! And our last little figure all of our Discovery learners love and know very well. Sandy Palacios, born February 4, 1974 in Belmopan, Belize. 
this Belizean educator started her career in human services in 2003 when she joined the Discovery family. In 2017, her dedication and hard work was recognized and she was promoted to Community Outings Coordinator. And in 2018, she was promoted to Supervisor. In 2020, she was awarded the RCOC Spotlight Award. She turns 47 years old today. Happy birthday, Sandy. You're very much appreciated. Happy birthday, everyone. Come along, Discovery Learners, and we will see the landmarks of the world. As we continue our journey of discovery throughout Colombia, here are some landmarks you should see, starting with the Monstrate Mountains in Bogota. The Monstrate Mountain is Bogota's most famous landmark and a source of pilgrimage. You can take the cable car or the mountain train to its dizzying heights of 3,152 meters above sea level, or make like a pilgrim and walk or run up the mountain. The climb on steep stones ascends around 600 meters and it takes about an hour, although the high altitude means it's best to take it slow. At the top you'll find Monstrate Church, plus cafes and restaurants, as well as a colorful hummingbirds and stunning view. Wow, pretty neat place. Next is the Guantape Rock. Guatape Rock, sometimes known as La Pindara, or the Stone, is a national monument. Worshipped by the indigenous people who used to inhabit this area, this huge rock was first climbed in 1954 by three men who needed five days to scale it. Nowadays, you could climb the steps wedged in the crack of the rock surface in less than an hour or so and enjoy the views of the surrounding reservoir and its islands. Wow, that's a really big rock. And that looks really fun to climb. Next on our list is La Torre Panoramica, which means panoramic tower and is also known as the Sky Tower, which you could climb during the day. So you can see across the snow-capped Ruiz Volcano and the Santa Isabel Mountain. The tower is located in the Cipri neighborhood. It has an extreme swing, bar, restaurant, and interactive games. But best of all are the views from its open-air skywalk into the valley some 300 meters below. Wow, an extreme swing? And you're pretty high up there, but still a pretty neat place to visit. Next on our list of landmarks is La Popa, La Popa Mountain, and the 400-year-old Convento Santa Cruz de La Popa dominate the closest city of Cortagina. The peak must be about 150 meters above sea level, but its height and thick jungle protected the convent throughout the city's turbulent history, and every year hundreds of pilgrims ascend on it for a grand procession. Although pilgrims prefer to climb La Popa, most visitors avoid the heat and the past difficulties and take a taxi to the summit, visiting the convent and enjoying the glorious views over the city. Wow, pretty cool! Let's move on. Next on our list is Plaza Butero. Fernando Butero is Colombia's major gift to the art world and one of Mendelin's most famous sons. In homage to his work, Mendelin's houses Plaza Butero, a section containing 23 Butero sculptures in his idealistic style. Wow, this seems like a really good place if you like looking at art and cultural stuff. Next we have the Fort of San Felipe. This is also located in Cartagena. While Cartagena's old city is undoubtedly the prime attraction of the city, it's kind of difficult to pick just one of the colonial buildings as a focal point. Instead, just outside the walls of Cartagena is Fort of San Felipe, a historic and fascinating structure that gives a great insight to the history of Cartagena and therefore South America in general. And lastly, we have the Cocora Valley. While the thought of going to visit some trees may seem unappealing to some, those who have visited Kokor Valley often report back saying it's their favorite part of the country. It's the sheer uniqueness of the area that really captures people's amazement. This is a landscape you won't find anything close to anywhere else in the world. This is where you could find the world's tallest palm trees. The towering heights they reach will take your breath away. It's simply a place you cannot miss. Wow, this is a really cool place. I wouldn't mind visiting that place if I ever visit Colombia. Now, Colombia is a pretty old country, 
with lots to see, but unfortunately we do not have time to cover it all. But what we did see was pretty interesting. Now be sure to stay tuned tomorrow's episode as we wrap up our journey across Columbia on Ability to Learn. Here's the animal of the day. Today's animal is the anteater. Anteaters are funny looking creatures that can be found in Central and South America. They live in grasslands, woodlands, rainforests, and deciduous forests. There are four types of anteaters. Some of them are near threatened species. Here are some interesting anteater facts. Anteaters can be small, like a squirrel, or seven feet long, continuing from the tip of the nose to the end of its tail. Those are giant anteaters. Anteaters are toothless creatures. They use their long sticky tongue to catch prey. Their tongues can be up to two feet long. It is also narrow and covered with tiny spines. Anteaters catch ants and termites through the hole of the top of the anthill. They never destroy the anthill because they plan to come and eat another portion of ants in the future. Since ants can bite, anteaters must eat them quickly. They are flicking their tongues about 150 to 160 times in a minute during feeding to grab enough ants to avoid bites. Digestion is facilitated by specifically designed stomach that grinds large quantity of ants and termites. Their stomach produces formic acid instead of hydrochloric acid which is normally found in other mammals. They can eat up to 30,000 insects per day. They also have poor eyesight but excellent sense of smell. They can detect smell 40 times better than humans. Anteaters use their nose to find food. Anteaters have low body temperature compared to other placental animals, just 32.7 degrees of Celsius. They sleep about 15 hours a day. Anteaters have 4 inch long claws that use them to defend against jaguars and cougars. They are also solitary animals, and they gather only during mating season. A group of anteaters is called a parade. Mama anteaters usually are pregnant around 190 days and ends with a single baby. Baby anteaters stay with their mother two years or until she becomes pregnant again. Mothers carry a baby on her back during the first year. Anteaters out in the wild can live up to 15 years, but they can go up to 25 years in captivity. Wow, pretty interesting animals. And they do look kind of weird. It's kind of hard to tell whether they're coming or going. And they have long noses, kind of like an elephant does. What do you think of the anteater? Let me know in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the mango tree. Mango is a flowering plant. And even though they don't look alike, Pistachios and cashews are the closest relatives of the mango. This plant originates from South Asia where it represents an integral part of human diet for 5,000 years. Due to its rich aroma and high nutritional value, mango is very popular and often consumed worldwide. It is cultivated in numerous countries in the tropical and subtropical regions of the world. People created over 400 varieties of mango via selective breeding. Majority of mango varieties are cultivated in India, where the mango represents sacred fruit. According to legend, Buddha meditated in the shadow of a mango tree. Certain cultures use mango as a part of wedding and religious ceremonies. Here are some interesting facts about the mango tree. Mango trees are tall, evergreen plants that can reach 115 to 130 feet in height. Its crown has a diameter of 33 feet. Mango has narrow leathery leaves that are dark green in color and alternately range on the branches. Mangoes have a strong root that grows 20 feet deep into the ground. The roots are designed to absorb water and nutrients from well-drained, sandy soils. Mango develops small, white or pink flowers that consist of five petals. Individual flowers are a part of branch inflorescences. Flowers of the mangoes are pollinated by wind or by insects such as types of flies, moths, and butterflies. Mangoes develop egg or kidney-shaped fruit covering the smooth skin. The size of the fruit and color of the skin depends on the variety. Most commercially available mango varieties have reddish-green skin. Edible part of the fruit consists of orange flesh that surrounds a large seed located centrally. 
Mango trees start to produce fruit after four years. Some trees produce fruit even after 300 years. Mangoes become fully ripe after three to six months. Commercially available mango is harvested green to prevent rotting of the fruit on its way to supermarkets around the world. India is the greatest producer of mango in the world. 60% of globally consumed mango originates from India. Mango is a rich source of potassium, vitamin C and A. It also contains high amount of dietary fibers which facilitate digestion. Mango can be consumed raw or in the forms of juices, ice creams, milkshakes, and different types of salty and sweet dishes. Compounds isolated from the leaves, bark, skin, and seed are used in traditional Indian medicine. The latest study suggests that these compounds may prevent development of diabetes and decrease high blood cholesterol levels. Oils isolated from the leaves and the tree sap may produce contact dermatitis in sensitive individuals. Mango juice can be used as a marinade because it often softens the texture of meat. Mango trees can survive a couple hundred years out in the wild. I love mangoes. They are delicious. And you see this picture right here? This is how I usually like to eat my mangoes. So do you like mangoes? Let me know in the comment section below. And now for the word of the day. Today's word is endeavor. It has two meanings. As a verb, it means Try hard to do or achieve something. As a noun, it means an attempt to achieve a goal, an earnest and industrious effort, especially when sustained over a period of time. Endeavor. Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's video. That word is optimism. It's a noun. It means Hopefulness and confidence about the future or the successful outcome of something. Optimism. Let's take a look at the art of the day. Today's art is the ruana, which is also known as the poncho. A ruana, which is possibly a Spanish word for ragged, is a poncho-style outer garment native to Colombian and Venezuelan Andes. In Colombia, the ruana is a characteristic and traditional garment of the Department of Boyaca. Initially made by the indigenous and mestizo people, it is also made by peoples in Bogota. In Venezuela, it is widely used and made in the Andean states of Táchira, Mérida, and Trujillo. Used since the colonial times by Venezuelan inhabitants, currently only in the Andean region, its traditional use is maintained. Similar to other poncho-like garments in Latin America, the ruana is basically a very thick, soft, and sleeveless square or rectangular blanket with an opening in the center for the head to go through and slits down the front to the hem. A ruana may or may not come with a hood to cover the head. In Colombia, there are two festivals in honor of the ruana. Both municipalities of the Department of Boyaca, the World Day of Ruana, and Nubosa, the National Festival of Ruana, this unique and iconic garment is a fundamental part of identity in Colombian culture. For several centuries, the Ruana was worn by native peoples who apparently wove it out of wool and about knee long, which was well suited for the cold temperatures of the region where they were used not only as a piece of garment but also as a blanket or used in a bed to sit on as a cushion of sorts. These garments are usually woven by women and nowadays they use brightly colored dyed wools to make them. Each article is unique and woven usually with love and care and given to a husband or a son who is about to set on a long journey or travels. Today you can find ruanas or ponchos in sale in almost every department store in the United States. Some genuine handmade ruanas from Colombia can reach prices up to $500. These garments are beautiful, and I in fact own one, but it's not from Colombia, and it didn't cost $500, but I like them nonetheless. So what do you think of the Rana or the Poncho? Let me know in the comment section below. Here is today's interesting fact. 
did you know sometimes there isn't a full moon in the month of February? It's true! At 28 days and still only 29 days every fourth leap year, February is the shortest calendar month. It takes about 29.53 days for the moon to orbit the Earth, a so-called syndonic month. So if there is a full moon on January 31st, there cannot be another until March 1st. That's exactly what happened in 2018. That February was called a black moon, which occurs about four times per century. The next one isn't scheduled to happen again until April of 2022. Darn, we missed it this year. So yeah, sometimes February doesn't have a full moon. Pretty interesting, huh? Yes, cue the credits. This means we have reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. So farewell, Discovery Learners. Teacher Liz here is saying thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to attend the live Zoom sessions provided to you every day by the Discovery Day Program's educational team. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified for all the fun here on Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program.